Water and sanitation in Vanuatu, the current situation, is um, uh, to me the most uh, highlighted issue. Um, top on the list of, related to water and sanitation is access to clean water by rural communities. We have uh, 80%, 70 to 80% of Vanuatu, uh, people in Vanuatu uh, live in rural areas. Uh, live in villages, live in communities, live on remote islands. And for them to access clean water, safe water, is the major issue. It's the major challenge. It's a challenge for them because of the environment which they live in. It's a challenge to the government because we are seen to have the duty to provide the support for that. And it's a challenge for donors who come into that space and want to do something. The first challenge is that rural communities don't have access to resources. Rural communities have, have resources, but they're not able to convert those resources into, into money or into something that they can use to develop water. Um, that's number one, it's the access to resources. Number two challenge is to do with technology. Uh, what technology we have available in Vanuatu or what technology we have available um, in the region, whether that technology is compatible with uh, the environment that they're in. And I think a third challenge also is to do with uh, the local capacity on the ground. That if we have a water problem in the village or if we have a water shortage, uh, can we rely on local people to use whatever means they have to be able to address that water problem? How do we build resilience locally in a WASH context? I think, first of all, in my view, it, it begins with getting, getting the right information about a community in Vanuatu. I think it's very easy sometimes to make comparative judgments. I think we need to first of all build a profile of, of the community in Vanuatu. And we need to map. So it's, it's building a profile, it's uh, mapping the issue, and then getting good data, good information. And then we use that information, then we, we, we design a process with consultation with local people, we design some tools with local people, we bring in some training if we see a gap, we bring in some technology, we bring in some equipment, um, and then we, we train the people there. Not, we don't take them out of the community to train them, sometimes that seems to be the style. I think we keep the training local, keep the, bring, bring the trainer in, and then let them do that there. And I think in WASH, if we do that, then, for example, if we are building a rainwater catchment harvesting system, it means we're using local materials, we're using local labor, and then we, we, we're procuring things locally, and then we tell them, now that you've built this, you own it. You own the success and you also own the problem, both of it. So if you want it to work well, your water committee has to cooperate, people have to meet regularly, and you have to have co continued ownership around what you've, you've built. My wish really is for government to be more closer to communities when they're talking about WASH, rather than we just see communities as a, as a, as a place where we go to implement projects. I think we need to, we need to go, we need to delegate or decentralize more of our functions to communities.